Hi, I'm Troy Larson from Code of Magic, and today we're going to talk about how you can better manage your remote teams using Coda and Slack and some other really cool packs that we created. So let's start off by looking at our own dashboard. So this is a, um, a recent version of it. We're always updating it. And in this dashboard, um, we have a table of all of our users. Okay, we have this all users table and I've hidden the names and Slack IDs and I've also filtered it down to just a few. Um, this is a table that we use to keep track of the status of all employees. Um, and so let me just jump ahead here. So we have this thing called status base. And what this is, is the, the common text that exists in all of our statuses, including mine. And, and this lets other people know in their Slack status how long they're working or if they're done working, when they're going to come back. So as you can see here, we have done working until... And then we have the Filipino flag and the American flag because one is in Filipino time and one is in U.S. time. And so if you were to look at, for example, my status, which I have already, you can see that I have working until 9 a.m. in Filipino time, which means I'm working until 9 p.m. tonight. So anyone who is in Slack can immediately see if the person is either working or if they're gone or when they're working until. And we do this by creating some building blocks. So let's break this apart. So the first thing we have here is this status base formula. And the status base formula is a concatenation. So we're combining text together. So we're combining the activity. So other activities we have are eating dinner, taking a break. Um, you know, we want this to be something somewhat enjoyable. We don't want to get too personal. Uh, we don't have we don't need to know what employees are doing but some a lot you know some employees like to say i'm eating dinner and they sh they put a picture uh an emoji up of what they're eating and they enjoy that so um it's it's depends on you know the, on the person but pretty much working until or done working um and then we have we concatenate the flag and then we are concatenating formatted ph formatted a atl atlanta so i'm in atlanta um Okay, let's take a look now at those. So what is working until? So this uses uh, both of these working in, well, let's go back to the formatted date time first. Um, the formatted format date time comes from the date time magic pack. And what this allows you to do is to format your date time however you want. So there is a format date time function in Coda, but it's very limited. It gives you a preset number of things that you can use to format your text. This allows you to format it however you want. And because we only have about 100 characters in Slack status, uh, we want to limit that. We want to really take advantage of the real estate. So really the day of the week and the time is all we need. We don't really need more than that. So uh, we don't need dates. We don't need the year. It's it's irrelevant and extraneous. Um, we just need to know, is it today, pretty much today or tomorrow? So for me, um, they are 12 hours ahead. So I'm always wondering, is it 9 a.m. Uh, their time? So that's Tuesday or Wednesday and today's Tuesday. I just like to have that the, the day specifier. Um, but you can customize it however you want. And then we have the same thing for the, the Philippines time. And if you notice both of, whoops, I grabbed the wrong one again. Uh, if you look at the formula, both of these have a working until pH and a working until ATL. Let's take a look and see what those are. And you notice I'm creating little building blocks. I'm creating columns that are little pieces of the in, entire formula. Rather than just creating this mammoth mega formula that does all of the stuff, I'm creating these little building blocks in each of the columns. So let's look at the working until pH. Okay, this uses the time zone magic pack, um, our time zone magic pack, um, that, that simply allows you to pass in a date and time with the time zone and then convert it 
to another time zone. Okay. So the, the format is convert between time zones, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, uh, this time zone until Philippine time zone. Now, why do we pass in the, the time like this? Why don't we just pass in a date? Um, this is one of the really ugly parts when it gets into time zones is that time, time by itself is not time zone aware. And so when you are talking about 8 a.m. in computer terms, you're either talking about it in a time zone or time zone agnostic. In other words, it's it's completely devoid of any time zone. It's just eight o'clock. And that doesn't really exist in the world. There is no such thing as just eight o'clock. I mean, you can talk about Greenwich Mean Time, um, but, but really there is no such thing as just eight o'clock. So you've got to usually have a time zone identifier. When we say eight o'clock PM or eight o'clock in the morning to someone near us, it's assumed the time zone. We're still using a time zone. Uh, and so when we are sending a time and we want to convert a time in Coda, um, we want to give it a time zone to convert from and a time zone to convert to. And um, you know, one of the sometimes the confusing thing in Coda is that there's a, a document time zone. So the times that you are seeing are converted to uh, you are in the document time zone. And so there are some challenges there sometimes when you are working with the PACs about what time zone is this time in. Uh, and so you always have to be aware of the time zone. So this pack convert between time zones or this uh, function in the pack convert between time zones is a really awesome formula to simplify it. You just pass in the time, you give it the source time zone, and then the target time zone. So we are passing in the next time. And so this next time is when the person is working and it's based on that their time zone. So um, what this is doing is this is showing us based on their time zone. So 1 p.m., this person is starting at 1 p.m. Asia time. So if we look at the Philippine time zone conversion, we are converting from Asia Manila, or sorry, Asia Manila to Asia Manila. So the time isn't going to change. But in the working until Atlanta time zone, it's converting it from Asia Manila to America, New York, which gives us our local, well, for me, local time zone. So now we have two nice columns that give us a very simple figure of the working until. And then the formatted gives us a nice format of those. And then our status base gives us a concatenation of the activity the formatted with the flag, formatted with the flag. So very simple once you break it down. Uh, I really don't like huge, giant formulas. I try to break everything into small formulas um, as possible and then combine them and to use them together. Um, okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. So now when I come into uh, my set my Slack status, I can come up here and say, uh, click on the update status, and I'll show you what this looks like. What this is going to do is it's going to update the all users table and set the activity, the working until date, the next time, and then it's going to set my status in Slack based on that. And then we are going to clear out the text box just so it's nice and clean for the next time. And then we're going to refresh the Slack users table so that we can update the um, statuses for everybody. Now we could just grab my status from the table and um, be done with it, but I'm using this really as an opportunity to just kind of do a refresh because they only update every once every hour. And sometimes people go into Slack and they update the emoji. Um, maybe someone goes in there and 
uh, is not thinking and they change their status in Slack, this just refreshes everything. So now I come in here and let's just for uh, demo purposes, I'm going to change that to 10. And I'm going to say I am recording my YouTube video and update Slack status. Um, so this is going to run. And while this runs, I will tell you that this is a really important part of our workflow. Um, we had another Slack plugin that I wrote that allowed them to do the same thing so they don't have to uh, manually type in their work status. But but really, I, I think the goal here is we want everyone to come back to the dashboard, come back to the dashboard and keep everything in the dashboard. Okay, so this just updated. This will flicker in a few seconds when it updates. And you can see how that is going to update. Um, now, while that's updating, the second part to this, which I'll talk about in a, in a later video, um, we also... There it is. So recording my YouTube video. And if I go to here, you can see that it is now updated in my in my Slack status. So now anyone who goes to my Slack status or is, sends me a message, they can see that I'm working until 10 um, and that I am what I'm doing right now. Well, uh, they can see what my status is. So this is meant to be kind of a free form for one off things. The other thing I want to talk about, which I, I don't want to go too much detail right now because it's part of another workflow. Um, we actually have a, a sneak preview down here. So this one says edit managing document permissions in code of video. Um, I have this little play button here and I'll just give you a sneak preview. When I hit the play button, you'll see that it turns to work in progress and I am refreshing my tables. So remember the video editing, edit manage document permissions in the code of video. And what this will actually do is it will start the task or mark it in progress. And at the same time, it will do the same thing. So it will actually go out to Slack, update my status with my current task, and it will append the status base. So we have that common base for everything. So everyone's status has that same suffix, which is awesome. And, and we all have just learned to, to look at that. So if I want to see how late someone's working or if someone, when someone is coming in, who's got a kind of a different schedule, I use this all the time. It's super powerful. And it also gives you using the, the tasks like this, you putting the tasks in the status, I think gives the team more accountability as well. So you can see what other people, and you can see what anybody is working on the, in the entire team. I use this as well. So the team can see what I'm working on. Um, and, and it really gives us, I think, a sense of accountability. We have other things in our, in our workflows that help with that. But anyway, I think this is a really awesome tool, especially if we have remote teams. I highly recommend this. So again, this uses the Slack magic pack that uses the time zone magic pack and the uh, date time magic pack. If you have any questions about any of this, post a comment below and please subscribe to this channel. We got some amazing stuff coming. I'll see you next time.